Well, hey, good morning to you. It's your old grandpa Coyote, Coyote coming to you once again from Crestone, Colorado here in, uh, what is this? Planet Earth, Mother Earth, right here in the heart of the Mother Earth because her heart's pretty big and broad and encompasses a lot of territory. And sometimes in some places, you feel like you're right in the center of that heart. And by golly, in this instance, you are. Same down in that Red Rock Desert, down a couple hundred miles from me here, too. Same way out there. You can feel the heart of the mother everywhere you go. You go to some places where it's silent, and you can hear it, feel it, like the drumbeat that keeps everything flowing here on Mother Earth. The base is the essence of our life. I've sit on top of mountains before in some very remote places in this United States. And I've felt it and I've heard it. And I've communed with that heart. And even as you hear me speaking of it, you know it's communing in you right now, even if you're in the middle of the biggest, busiest, dirtiest city they ever created. It's still there. But it's best felt in these remote places. Gosh, guys, i got to tell you, I kind of wished I wouldn't even have made that seven-second video, that rodeo video, because my goodness golly, since that came into being, since I did that little video, life has been one whoop de doo buckaroo let me tell you, it's just been one thing after another, after another, after another. I've been flat on my back. I'm normally a pretty healthy guy. I've been flat on my back with some crummy little virus going around. I mean, you know, and then there's all kinds of intrigue and drama going on in my life. I've got to move out of my house, get myself a new palace to play in for me and my doggies, you know. My one dog, Angel, my sweetheart dog had taken a little fall and hurt her back and can't walk on her hind legs we're all working on her and praying for her and sending her good love and energy so i know she's going to get well it's just a matter of when but it's just been one thing after another after another i've had some uh personal problems with people that have been i've been trying to help out been staying i mean you know it's just craziness but it's like everything's coming to a head. It's like we're being stretched to our maximum capabilities right now as human beings. We're being asked to step across the line. You know, and it comes in ways that are different. Ways that will slow you down, speed you up, but always a challenge. Ways that will bring the most ancient pain you have right to the surface again and again and again so that your body has to manifest it so that you can purify it so that you can finally be done with it and don't lie to yourselves no matter how much peace you do have that pain still exists and if you suppressed it more than likely you got some cancer or something like that going on because that's going to come out. And that's where it's going to be. Because if you won't deal with it on one level, you squeeze it down and hide it away, then you're going to deal with it on the physical level or in some other way. There'll be emotional challenges. I mean, people, first off, we've got to be honest in ourselves. We have to see that we are indeed divided inside, that we have been occupied by some kind of energy that's made us feel very unhuman, very unkind, very cruel, very angry. <laughs> and everything in between. But if we just see it, just recognize it, then we can begin the process that's already in process, which is the putting it back together again. The Humpty Dumpty had a great fall, and when he did, he busted into a gazillion pieces. And so we've spent many lifetimes as males and females running through this world of duality, trying to pick up those shattered pieces. And there's been a crew that's been working through it all. 
maybe a couple hundred thousand souls been doing the same things over and over again, going there, visiting the life, collecting the energy of one little part of themselves back together in that lifetime so that in the next one they'll be a little more full and then a little more full. So it's bringing it back to the place where it began again, energetically, and in kind of a physical way too. Because what we've extended into this world of cruelty is like a dream. We're scripting it as we go along. It's like living in a movie, you know, because this kind of cruelty lacks reality. It really doesn't have the substance in creation. It has no real foundation, no place of bearing, no place of growth, of coming out and being the ugly old plant that it is, you see. It doesn't have roots in life, in reality. All life is love. All love is pure, truthful existence in individuated forms, all a part of the greater cosmic whole. Of course, what else would it be? I mean, shoot. <laughs> and anybody tries to tell you otherwise is trying to control you, change you, make you doubt yourself. You know, that's just the way it is. But that's all right. We're here to face those challenges too. By living in untruth, we come to know what truth really is. By going through this illusionary reality where illusions appear as very real, where things such as cruelty can exist and people can feel so cut off from one another that they feel alone. Like there's only one person here. I mean, it's got to be better than that. I mean, that is probably the most cruel place any person could ever place themselves. And anything you do to exaggerate it just makes it worse. Say you get yourself tossed in jail and you live in a little cubicle and you get tormented and stuff. I mean, you know how it goes. But it's just there to push yourself to the limit so you'll finally step out of the alone thing. Finally step away from that pain that has kept you separate from everything and everybody else to the point where we have to grasp each other, cling hard to feel, to anything, to live a life. Take some real exercise here. Yet, as we soften up now, and this is the key, step into the pain, soften. Just keep doing I don't care which way it comes to you, how it comes to you. How weak or how strong you're feeling in this moment. Babies, just step into the feeling and consciously soften it. Feel the love come alive inside of your captured heart and know that it's captured no more. That you are free to be. That you do not have to bear the burdens for yourself or anyone else any longer. And the reason being, because now you can begin to see the burdens of the blessings, as the blessings that they truly come to be. Every burden you've borne, especially this alone thing, is there to help you ripen into the most blessed an essential, pure, blissful state of being that could be imagined, that can be created. Because that is our natural inheritance. That's who we as human beings are. <laughs> We're angels for heck's sakes, all of us. Some even more refined than that. But each of us, a tiny little speck in the cosmic hole yet, each of us is the cosmic whole because we are that little speck. And we can live the fullness of the cosmic whole inside of ourselves and outside as well because what's in reflects outward. That's creation. That's how we are. That's who we are. That's what we are. And it's just time to remember it. So how do you remember it? 
Well, you keep tuning in. You know. You do the meditative practices that involve the third eye, the open palms of the hand. You feel life. Energy is flowing. You feel that creation coming back together inside of you. All of those scattered parts now assimilating into the presence of your being. And parts of yourself are starting to panic now and overreact. And you're having difficulty containing your emotions. And yeah, you probably heard a few people along the way speaking strongly to them, but maybe even that had a place, has a place in certain moments. Maybe some people just can't hear otherwise. Maybe you won't either, but maybe it's time. By going through all of this crap, all of this drama, maybe it's time to see the central essence in it and to live from that place which is without pain, which is true freedom. Freedom to be guided by your very own heart. So when you're in those meditative moments, consciously practice bringing your thinking, your thoughts, your feelings down here to the heart, in the center of your chest. Join these two. There are restrictions that have been placed in you, but they are dissolving away. And as they do, you come to see reality. That's the true beginning of the age of truth. You can never be lied to again. You don't have to worry about trust and faith. You never did, but you didn't know it. You take one look at a person, a place, a thing, and you know what your connection is. You know what that represents in your life, and it cannot deceive you when you live from the ever-knowing, ever-loving, ever-creating heart, in the center of your being. When you're finally completely assimilated there, all of these seemingly scattered parts, which were never really scattered. We've always been whole. We've always been completely together. We've always been the creative essence of life. Creation itself. Why do you think other beings would want to mess with us otherwise, you know? I mean, you know, yeah, we make good slaves, but they're tickled pink to think they can take the central core essence of life and control it in some way. But... Again, it's just a honey-flavored trap for those beings of darkness who needed to come back to their light. Human beings have been here, and we are the baited trap, and they have taken the bait, and now we finish it. It might take us a year. It might take six months. It might take 25 minutes. Does it matter? Time is irrelevant anymore. Just do what you got to do. There's going to be upheaval in your life, there's going to be many changes. You can't, it can't be helped. You just roll with it, flow with it, be with it. Stay centered as much as you can. When you're not there, get yourself back to a private place and get yourself back together. In nature is the best. I know the colder weather is starting to happen now, so maybe if you got some cold weather gear, you can still be in nature. Take advantage of the opportunities that are given you to have some quiet time, but also to assimilate these energies with other beings, to speak of the changes going on in your life with others. If you have to do it on a social network, so be it, but just do it. Discuss. Be. Share your situation with others and they'll know they're not alone. And you start to see the creative connection that exists between us all that essentially makes us the one person, that cosmic whole. The creation of creations. That which creates, that love, that central essence. That's the message I've been receiving from every source that's come at me whether it be antagonistic or loving or something else. That's the message. That's the core message. Return to the center presence of your being. Be that which you are. Be that love. It doesn't mean you got to be an old softy. Hell, my name's Coyote. That means I am cantankerous. 
<laughs> and I can raise a little hell with you just as easy as I can peace. But the hell takes its toll on all of us. So it's time to step away from that kind of crap. Recognize that's the old paradigm of play the old guardians, you know. And learn to live a little more naturally. Learn that you don't have to take advantage of one another. That you don't have to take anything. You don't have to step on people. That when you're in communion with your heart, you're more naturally in communion with those around you. And you will more naturally function together as a uniform unit of beings that serve each other, that are here to serve each other and provide goods and services for one another so that we get through the life that we're living. And all this can happen very naturally. It already does. It's just simply a matter of recognizing it. And then falling into a more truthful place of being for yourself. If you're an accountant, you may want to give up on that crap because dollars and cents, money, trade, that kind of crap, going out the window, man. As we gain our consciousness, we see no need for trade. Everything is of equal value. That's what we call equity. All life serves its purpose. All life is therefore equally valuable, whether it be a stone, a tree, a human being, or something beyond that. Total spirit essence. It's all equally valuable. Each person equally valuable within the framework of creation. A fox, a human, an owl, an eagle, all equal, all the same. They don't worry about where they are in creation. They just be where they are in creation. They do what they are in creation. They perform according to the dictates of their heart. This is what levels the playing field is the heart. I know it's hard to conceive of when we've been so thrown into this economic reality where everything has values of varying degrees and we put dollars and cents or pounds and ounces on it, penny weights, whatever, some way to measure the value and then to trade that value as if we're insufficient to start with. And we don't give two hoots about one another. There's a coldness that crept in that really amplified the cruelty through the use of money and trade. But why would we go there if we didn't want to experience that coldness, that hardness, and see what it does to people, how they become uncontrolled, how the coldness takes over and some are so heartless they could destroy the whole earth and think it was a good thing they were doing. Kill off three-fourths of the population and think that's a good thing. You know, you can rationalize just about anything when you're totally cut off from the heart, when you have no connection with consciousness and all you are is an illiterate little brain running around inside going amok because you have no operator. You're running on autopilot and it don't work too good, you know. <laughs> Remember the blow-up doll in airplane? Be careful. <laughs> Guys, just want you to know I love you. I'm thinking of you. We're all going through the same kinds of trials at the same time. We're like fish swimming in schools in the sea, babies. Only we haven't seen that, but you're starting to. You're starting to gain that awareness. You're starting to get to that place where you can truthfully conceive of a world without economy. <laughs> where we're all equally happy and happy to serve. And we don't have to slave and sweat in the ways that we have before. This has been punishment we heaped on ourselves for the perceived torments that we created in some other lifetime. Some, I mean, guys... We have been so busy punishing ourselves or thinking that's what we're doing that we've had no time for reality. And thank God now we've got a little bit of leisure time so we can do this. 
And as we become more conscious, we see that the functions in this life are more naturally performed when they come from the heart and they just exist. They don't take any motivation. It doesn't take an economic need to persuade you to provide shelter for you and your, your, your those that you care for. And food and sustenance if you need it. Loving is probably the primary function that all of us do. And many beings in this world to this day feel there is no love in their lives. They're unloved and unloved and unlovable, the untouchables and so forth. And this is so untrue and so uncharacteristic of humans to perform in this way. I tell you the last two hundred years have been some of the most cruel ever foisted upon the people of this planet or this planet herself. But we've chosen these moments to amplify our need, our desire to return to the heart so that when the time came and the opportunity came, when that seven seconds is up and the hands of reality reach for you and draw you back to the bosom of life, you're going to take those hands. In other words, when your consciousness starts to rise, you're going to welcome it. You're not going to fear it any longer. That's the most significant change right now here in September 20-something in the year 2013. You're starting to realize there's nothing to fear, which means you're becoming brave in your heart. And great changes are happening here. A lot more to come. People draw together with those of equal heart when you can. Don't make requirements on each other. Let go of the old ways or it won't work. Realize you cannot use one another in the way that you have in the past. But you've got to let go of those practices. And just offer your value to others. That they might see the value in themselves. And all come to be and serve because it's the loving thing to do and that's the way we ought to be because that's who we are. Divine creation in motion. Love, in other words, that loves to experience itself in a myriad of ways. People, don't get tired on me now. Don't fall short. and Don't think you're falling short no matter what's happened to you or what is happening to you. You might be going through the most gnarly divorce you've ever seen. It might be the end of the world as you know it. But what the hell? You're a brave little adventurer. Step forward. Let's see what's here and what's real. Let's get natural with one another. Let's see what we're made of. And demonstrate it to one another. By living lives, they're about as pure and natural as you can get. And God, I don't know about you, but I felt far distant from that kind of life these past couple of weeks. Three weeks, I reckon. I felt like that life had gone from me and I needed to, like, you know, be angry again. But it was just part of the process and the healing I'm going through that takes, can take the most abject of souls, the most tormented of souls, and bring it back together again, healing it, in a peaceful, loving way. That's what it's all about. No matter how difficult your trials are today, the way to step through them is to keep coming back to the heart and remind yourself again and again, through feeling it, that that's who and what you are. And sooner or later, all of this anxiety transforms. It doesn't go away, it just transforms. It becomes confidence, a complete lack of fear. And this will allow you to be brave enough to let yourself live in bliss and share that bliss with the entirety of the universe. It's our natural state of being. It's the natural way. See you next time, kids. Grandpa loves you. And it's a beautiful day to be living no matter what's going on. Rock and roll soothes yourself.